Okay guys, this is another bonus video that is in response to a student question. And that question is, how did I create snow that you can see as like an example in my, provo imi in my promo image? Oh, I gotta delete this. Okay, so I have this basic rock that I created here, a boulder, and it was just created from a cube that I turbo smoothed a couple times and then put a noise modifier onto. Okay, so you have that. Now if you wanna put snow on this, turn it into an edit poly, and then what I do is hit control V to make a clone of it, make a copy, and then hit alt Q to isolate that copy. So now the original is not there anymore, just the copy is. And then go into the poly sub object mode, make sure ignore back facing is selected, go into your top view, and swipe across this rock like that. And if you go to the side view, you'll see that all the top polygons where the snow would land on that rock have been selected. So what we can do is say edit, select inverse, and delete. So now we have the place where the snow would go. Okay, so what do we do with this? If we unisolate, we have the rock and then we have the snow, two separate objects. Let's isolate again, Alt-Q. Now what I do is go into here, create panel, go to this tab, Geometry, and go to compound, compound Objects, and go to Blob Mesh. And you just create a Blob Mesh object in your scene. And then you go to Modify, and you pick Blob Objects. It's going to be that. And then you adjust the size of it until you get a nice blanket of snow on there. And then you can convert this to an edit poly. You can delete that little extra polygons that we had to create the blob mesh because now the blob mesh is the snow. And you can turbo smooth that, make it look a little better. And maybe we could have blob meshed it a little better so that it got a nicer blanket on there. It can be a little tricky sometimes and scale definitely matters. The bigger the rock is, the, the easier it is to get a nice blob mesh to go on top of there. So that's one way to quickly generate some snow then you'd have to go and make a snow material and apply it to this. Let's uh, just put some generic materials on there so we can see what we're working with here. Okay, now you can see it a little better. And this is really basic, obviously. But these are the kind of tricks you use to create snow on top of existing objects. And you can see it actually curls under a little bit right there, which is nice, kind of like it's been melting a little bit. And you can create a thicker blanket too. And sometimes what you can do, if you have like a wall or something, you can just go in and literally just model the snow. So there's no real trick to that part of it. It's just modeling snow. And what I would do maybe is something like create a box on top of a wall. And it's always good to look at reference pictures too because they will tell you how that snow should look. Now let's just connect this a bunch of times and maybe cut some more lines in there like that. And then let's turbo smooth it a couple times. And I'm moving pretty quickly because I know we're well into this course now and since you guys have already followed the entire project, you should be well on your way to creating your own stuff and following along with ease at this point, which is great. Now as we have a turbo smooth on, we've got a bunch more tessellation in there and now you can just put like a noise modifier on it. Scale it down to like two. And then this is just the different axes. You'll see that orange box. It's becoming distorted. Okay, and then maybe you could turbo smooth it one more time, depending on how much polygons you're willing to use for this. But actually right here, I'm gonna put an FFD modifier, which I don't know if I've showed you before. But that creates a cage around this object. And if you go into the sub objects and go into control points, you can select each vertice of that cage. And when you move it, it does kind of a soft select. So that makes that more pillowy on top. Take these edges. So there you could model some nice snow as well. And then you can just convert all this back to edit poly like that. And again, you have a nice chunk of snow. Maybe that's a little too rough looking, but you get the idea. 
So there's not necessarily an easy script or anything like that that just puts snow everything on everything. Actually, there might be if you look around the internet. But if you want to create it all uh, manually, then these are some of the tricks that I've used to do it in the past. Now, if you want a particle system that actually emits snow, let's look into how to do that. In theory, creating the particle system for snow is pretty easy because there is if you go to geometry and drop down to particle systems and go to snow, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. This creates a snow particle system. That rectangle I just drew, drew is the icon for the snow, and that is what is going to emit the snow. So you draw that the size of where you want the snow to emit, and this line is the vector that it's going to follow, so that's the down arrow, essentially. Now, if I slide my timer, you will see that snow is coming out. And it looks just like snow. If you hit backslash, that will start and stop your animation. Okay, but the problem with the snow right now is with the default settings, it is uh, dying too soon. So let's look into that. Let's go right about there. Go into the modify, modify panel with our snow selected. And you can see you can change the count, you can change the fl flake size, the speed, the variation, the tumble, and the tumble rate. And here you can see the lifespan of each piece of our snowflakes, basically. Let's set this to like 600 and see what we get. Now the snow is falling further. Now if you stretch this animation over here and you do that by holding down Control and Alt at the same time and then the right mouse button and dragging this way Okay, that will up our animation time. And there you go, now our snow is falling all the way. And usually if you have a ground plane in there and you just want snow to be falling in the sky and not really landing on the ground, then this is really all you need to do. Mess with your settings until it's all correct. Obviously we're gonna need a lot more than 100 flakes, more like 10,000. Actually, that's what shows up in the viewport. We don't need all those in the viewport. We can put a thousand in there, though. And this is going to be very uh, intense on your on your processing power for your computer. So keep that in mind. But there you go. You have a nice, gentle snowfall, and you can turn it into crazier snow. You can make it fall faster. You can make it much more dense. You can do whatever. But basically, what I've done in the past is just treat this snow system as kind of an independent entity and not necessarily make it interact with my entire scene because that's not what I want. Sorry. Because you can... Let's get that camera in there. Because I, I just post-process it in later, essentially, is what I do. So I get this particle system, render it out by itself on a black background, and then just bring it into Photoshop and do a linear dodge with it so that it just adds the snow on top of my existing scene. So there you have it. Or you could just turn it on as you're rendering and uh, it will show up properly in front of your scene like you want it to. The only problem with that is you don't have control of it fully. So if it doesn't look right when you render, you'll have to adjust the settings and render again. If you do it in Photoshop, you can kind of mask things out and make it look exactly how you want in post and not have to render again. So keep that in mind. But the basics of it are pretty easy. As you can see, there's my nice little snowfall coming down and some snow already on my rocks down below. So hopefully that's helpful to the student who asked. And uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to make videos for you. And of course, I'll always answer in the forums, which is the preferred place for you to ask me questions. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next lecture.